Welcome back to 918 Disc Golf and welcome to yet another windy day in Oklahoma. I know, windy day, Oklahoma. And of course, I just kind of got over being sick and I wanted to get out and film a video today. And today is the day that it decides to pick up and be a consistent 20 mile per hour winds. I was gonna try to shoot a personal best video out here today, but I don't think that that is realistically possible. We're still gonna do a video out of it. There's a few things with my form lately that have been bugging me that I wanna work on, and we're gonna try to tackle those. And I will still be trying for a personal best, but that's not the point of the video. And of course, before we get started, let's just get a couple of practice putts in there. Oh yeah, we're good to go. Now today I am out at the lovely Centennial Park here in Owasso, Oklahoma, and it's been recently moved back to shorts, which is a lot of fun. Very scorable. Personal best having only been nine down, which is why I wanted to try for that today. But very scorable. A lot of stuff within like the 300 foot range, including our whole one, which today is right at 300 feet, right between those trees. Got a lovely headwind off the tee. We're gonna be going Vanguard. I have not warmed up throwing, so this could go very poor. And like I mentioned, I wanted to work on some form things. So we're gonna be slowing it down. Up to the most recent tournament I played, I had some pretty quick footwork, and I just noticed that like things weren't coming out the way that I wanted them to. So I'm hoping that with slowing it down and being intentional, I can find my line a little easier. Now fade in. Oh yeah. That is absolutely parked. I don't think you can ask for much better off the tee. Normally I go mid-range on this hole. It's 300 feet. But with a headwind straight in my face, not throwing any shots to warm up, felt pretty good about going with a control driver. And we're gonna start off one down through one. Whatever, for the heck of it, we'll still go for the personal best today. All right, I didn't mention it on the tee of hole one, but all of these are gonna be par threes today, par 54 course. Hole two is right out there, 340 feet or so. Looks like the wind's a little swirly, it switched up on me. We got another headwind, kind of left to right. We're gonna go Emperor to see if we can have it fight that crosswind a little bit. Oh, I love that. Come back in. Oh, I might be launched. Oh, that's absolutely launched. Oh wait, maybe not, maybe not. The wind kept it down. Starting out two for two in this wind would be absolutely huge, but it's kind of like your boy lately to play good in the wind. This past weekend, I actually took down the Midtown Showdown. By announcing the champion of our Midtown Showdown in the GTO Tour Series, Jacob Grant. And during that entire event, we had 25 to 35 mile per hour winds with gusts all the way up to 40. So I have no idea how I shot five under par the second round, but I will take it to go two for two. It just might be a PB day today. So starting off two for two is a great feeling, especially on a windy day like today. However, again, the main purpose as to why I'm out here is to try to slow things down and figure out my form. So to give you guys a little cue in here, something that I struggle with and I've struggled with for honestly a couple of years now and what I wanna fix is as I get into my plant, this leg, instead of you know having a little pro thing happen where it folds in, and you know, as they say, as a result of the brace, what ends up happening for me is this, what, what a lot of people will say to me is uh, the Solonen slide, where this, it almost kind of just pops up and slides in. And I don't really know how to fix that. Could be a stride thing being too long, could be that I'm going too fast. So I'm experimenting with slowing down today. But if you have ideas for me, on how to fix that, where if you've had this problem and you've kind of overcame it, this would be awesome if you have any advice on how to get over this problem right here. But we're gonna keep going. Hole three, 340 feet, similar to hole two, uh, pretty much a stock hyzer today. There used to be a tree up there that fell a couple years ago that used to be in the way of this one. Um, but unfortunately now it's all stumpy and all you gotta do is throw a big hyzer. Like that, and that should be perfect. Fade in more, yeah. Got like a 15 footer. Now normally most people would say, don't make big changes to your form before you go to a big tournament, but I'm somebody that generally adapts pretty quickly to changes. Um, I played with slower form yesterday, 
saw some pretty decent results. So making things like that, going from fast to slow or trying different things doesn't seem to hurt me in the, in the way it might hurt others, but this will go three for three. Kind of on a heater right now, not gonna lie. And speaking of heaters, they're talking about some 90 degree weather coming to Tulsa next week, which is absolutely insane. I would say that we skipped spring, but really we skipped winter. I mean, December through February was like stupid nice with the occasional cold spell, so can't complain. Hole four is gonna be 220 feet, plays right out there. There is a pond to the left that doesn't really come into play. Normally I throw forehand here, but because I'm working on some backhand mechanics, we're gonna go backhand turnover, and we've got an AVR3. Come out of it. That should be just fine. Oh, sit down. Yeah, okay, I, I thought it was way further than it was. Four for four is wild. And if you're new here and you think that I'm actually cheating today, I would encourage you to go watch my leveling up series where I absolutely botched the very first episode. All right, real quick before I get into hole five, I wanna give a quick shout out to you guys that have subscribed to the channel so far. We just passed 700 and that is absolutely insane to me, uh, but we are still pushing for 1000. And if you are new and you like this kind of content, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, we'll get into hole five. All right, getting into hole five, we've got a 320 foot par three right out there. Path on this one, walking path to the right and beyond is OB. You do have the pond that played to the left of four OB as well on the left of this hole. And you can go long and to the right into that pond up there. Don't ask me how I know. I have a bit of a straight headwind, so I am gonna go fireball. Oh, it's gonna be too stable. It's gonna... Well, first blunder of the round. Is there any form things that you guys are working on right now? If so, definitely let me know in the comments. I've always liked the idea of having a community of people working on their disc golf game. So I'm genuinely curious, let me know. <clears throat> Definitely could have thrown this thing on some Annie out of the hand, but the fireball for me just gets a little weird sometimes when you're throwing it into a headwind. Well, about 60 feet out, this would be big time to keep me down five for five. Do it. Oh! First par of the round, four down through five, still ain't bad. Need five more to tie and six to beat it. All right, here we've got hole six. It's 252 feet right out there. You've got pond to the left. Walking path on the right-hand side OB. Um, if you land on it and go beyond. Slight right to left crosswind. So we're gonna play a zone out to the right and just have it kind of fade into the basket. Got that lift off the wind and a little deep. Not bad though. And I've been using the blue Prodigy Mini today. Shout out to uh, you, Nolan. Put me five down through six. Oh yeah, that was a little high out of the hand, but it's in. These baskets don't usually like to catch this much. All right, hole seven plays just about the same. I believe right around 250 feet, right in between those trees up there. They're just, it's just past them. So you really want to try to push past. I'm going to go DGA Quake, because we're going to be playing in a little bit, into a little bit of a headwind. I really like that. Oh yeah, it beats the tree. Oh, it's short. That's all right though. We bit short, but it's about as long as the last one and it's framed up. I'll take it. Six down through seven. All right guys, sorry. There's not really a good spot for the camera on this one because it pretty much backs up right into some thorns and some trees, but hole eight, right at about 300 feet, plays up by some old horse stalls. Um, I usually go forehand on this one, but being that again, I'm working on my backhand today, we're gonna go fireball and there's a little patch of short grass up there. If you hit it right, it will skip. If I hit it short, it'll die. So we're gonna try to get it to the right spot. And we're gonna put a little baby flex on this. That might just have the distance to carry all the way there. Yeah, that's like a 10 footer maybe. You can still smell the horse. Might be a little longer than 10 feet, probably about 15, but right there to go seven. That's all right. All right, and to finish out the front nine, about 250 foot hole right through here. I'm gonna take the right side gap with a quake again. 
we have the wind kind of playing right to left, so hopefully it didn't lift it too much. And that's what we're aiming for. Oh, through the middle? Dude, I'm clutch. Let's freaking go. And I have a putt. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, folks. It doesn't matter if you're lucky if you can't capitalize on the luck you get. Do it. <laughs> All right, I apologize for the horrible quality in post as I zoom in on my face. However, this was the best angle I could get for the entire hole. Hole 10, and we're onto the back nine where things open up a little bit. Hole 10 is gonna be 264 feet. Um, plays as kind of an island. This walking path on the left-hand side all the way up to the basket. If you're on it or beyond it, you're OB. And normally I wouldn't throw anything more than a fireball on this hole, but with the wind being uh, the way that it is today, I'm gonna go up to a boss. And this is probably the most stable boss I have ever thrown in my life. It's pretty flat top. And I honestly think it's a juggernaut proto, but everybody tells me it's a boss. Got the cool end of an Air Force stamp on it. Oh, that might be gone. Bro, if that's not the most clutch thing I've ever seen in my life, I don't know what is. Now granted, this thing is pretty much only a utility disc because of how overstable it is. So if I lost it, probably could have replaced it, gone online and bought a $90 tilt, but either way, glad it's not gone. We're gonna go ahead and approach with a sidearm zone. That uh, wasn't great, but it'll get me up there and get me up and down for the par. All right, par's on the last three, so we're slowing down a little bit. Do you want to try to get back on the birdie train? We're three off tying the current PB, and we only need four to beat it. So we're still hunting. We got eight more holes to play, and the first of those four eight is going to be hole 11. Plays right out there in the middle of the field, 300 feet. Pretty much whatever you want to throw. The wind's kind of dead at the moment. We're going to go Pathfinder. Oh, that's too wide, Jacob. What are you doing? Of course the wind picks back up when you're putting. Poetic, isn't it? Oh. All right, we have officially hit a cold streak. That was like probably the easiest hole in the back. No, there's another easier hole in the back nine. So that's not the worst thing. All right, hole 12 is gonna be 320 feet. Another one that I could try to throw a backhand on, but would rather just throw a forehand. So we're gonna go Emperor. Come out of it. Skip up. Uh, it's all right, a little long. All right, pretty good forehand. Came out of the hand really low, but considering I've only thrown, like if this would be my second forehand of the day, I'm not gonna complain too much about it. Need this to get back on track so I can be seven down. There we, oh. My goodness, that almost spit out. I almost got the DGA treatment, which is sad because I bag a quake. All right, hole 13 out here at Centennial, right up there on the mound. Usually this hole plays over on a little island peninsula. And I think I can speak on behalf of all of Tulsa that that is the goat pin position and it should never be moved. But this one plays right at about 360 feet. Got a tailwind slash right to left. I'm gonna play a T-bird and see if I can just crash it into the hill. I love that. Get down. I'm gonna challenge you guys right now. Name a better fairway driver than an Avery Jenkins T-Bird. You can't. Guys, I'm serious, it's impossible. You literally can't name a better fairway driver. That was sketch. I am not even gonna lie. All right, we're hanging two off the personal best out here at Centennial Shorts. Hole 14 is a little tricky because it has this walking path that plays OB the entire way up and to the left. So you gotta get to the right of it towards the basket. Normally, again, same thing as many of the other holes before this. I go forehand here generally, uh, but today we're gonna take our fuse and we're gonna trust it into a little bit of headwind, have it turn and hopefully park the basket. It's turning, keep going, please. Don't be OB, don't be OB. That was too close for comfort. You guys remember how I said the wind died down? Well, it's back with a vengeance. And you know, I don't know why I'm complaining. I live in Oklahoma and I choose to be here. All right, tied with the PB with four to play. Hole 15 here, we've got 380 feet 
to the basket. You've got a creek that plays OB all along the left side, walking path that plays OB on the right side. We're gonna go Emperor, play it flat through the middle, see if we can give ourselves a look. If it fights out of that, and it's not going to, that's okay. You know what, par on this hole is just fine with me. Normally would go zone approach on a forehand, but we're gonna keep on working on the backhand. Just a little tip if you're a newer player, something that I like to do for myself is have this back left foot be a little bit further back left to act more of a counterbalance. So like when you come through here, you're less likely to yank to the right. At least this has been my experience with it. So we're gonna try to bring our foot back in and we're just gonna play a soft little approach shot up to the basket. Have it a little floaty in there. And that's all you gotta do. All right, any normal disc golfer would tell you that the last hole I just played was a lot harder than this one. But let me tell you something. And if you know me and you've played with me at this course, you know that this hole right here, hole 16 at Centennial, absolutely has my number. It is the simplest shot in the world. 230 feet across a little creek, you should never be in danger of going in. And somehow I find a way to mess this shot up. We're gonna go fuse, we have a tailwind, so I'm gonna trust it a little bit more than I usually do. Maybe magic will happen. That's so good. Why am I good at it all of a sudden? Go in the basket. Oh my gosh, dude. I need all the locals that have played this course with me, that have seen me mess this hole up countless times. Put vouch in the comments down below so that everybody that's new watching this video knows that I never do this. Oh, hey, personal best has been reached. We're 10 down, but we've got two more holes to play, so we can definitely do better. Hole 17 is right about 220 feet. Plays out there behind the tree. You should be able to see it on the uh, camera there. All right, we're gonna go zone. Heiser on the outside. Just try to put it as close as possible. I like that a lot. Ooh, I hate that a lot. How sick nasty of a statement would it be to make this putt to put me at 11? Oh, it wasn't even close. I thought it was good. We're gonna matty -o it. All right, final hole, hole 18. If you're still watching, just know I appreciate you. 300 feet, plays across a pond. Uh, you can do a big forehand or a big hyzer on the right-hand side, which is what I'm gonna do. That could be really good. Oh, the wind's pushing it down though. You know what, actually, massive 10 footer to go 11 down on the round, new PB on the shorts, in some good consistent wind, I'll take it. Let's go, dude. We stay getting these dubs. But if you've stuck around this long, this course has one more secret that I wanna show you guys. So I hope you're ready. That's right, the course secret is that the course has llamas. 